Psalms 12, to the chief musician, upon Shimeneth, that was the eighth musical term, a psalm of David. So here's another song. <clears throat> Help, Lord. <laughs> That's a bold statement. Help. For the godly man sees it. And it's going to be so and so as we get to the, <coughs> excuse me, the last days of the church. Paul says they'll be lovers of themselves, heady, high minded. For the faithful man, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. This is David. This is a song of David. Times are getting worse, Lord. Men are getting bad. They speak vanity, vain, empty. There's nothing. There's no talk. God, Jesus Christ, said, "Every man shall give an account of uh, the vanity of their their words. I, every idle word shall a man give account thereof that day. Everyone with his neighbor. So you're talking to people. You just nothing. There's no talk at all. Worthless. What's sports got to do anything? What's the weather got to do it? What's politics?" What's the politics have to do? You know, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. What's that going to do in New Jerusalem? I mean, I, I pray for our leaders, but the way many of them act, I don't think you're going to see them in the gates of Jerusalem. I'm sorry to say. I said many. I didn't say all. With flattery lips. Oh, how good you are. How great I am. How could you, you know, you do such a good job. You're such a fine person. You, you're just so wonderful. You're just so great. And with double heart, when I do it double heart, that's a sin of everybody. You know, you say one thing to somebody and then you go say something else behind their back. You, you, you be friendly to somebody else, but when you get home, I, you know, that guy's a rascal. Do they speak? Say one thing and you do another, then you, hour later, you say something else. We all have that tendency. The Lord shall cut off all flattery lips. All right, so verse 1, David says, listen, you know, the godly man, he's gone. Disappearing. Verse 2, he's telling you what men are doing. Who I'm going to assume that they were godly and they just go into vain talk. And then verse 3 is what, the, what God's going to do to them. He's going to cut off. And when Israel, as we're in the Old Testament, cut off would be, you were not saved. You did not go into uh, Abraham's bosom. God said in the law, certain things you do this and you do that, you'll be cut off from your people. That'd be like for us to say today, a person in this church, they're going to hell. All flattery lips. So flattery is a sin. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. And there's that proud again. It's never... Good, it is a sin. And yet you hear Christians and, and, and I'm proud, I'm, 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 you know, it's a sin. Who has said with their, with our tongue, those are lips, mouth, tongue, we, we, with our, with, with our tongue, will we prevail? Now sometimes in our English language, we say things and the Bible says something else. Like we say olive oil, and all right, that's good, then when it comes, it's, I'm sure you're trying to say, oil, olive. Sometimes that messes my words up. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? And that's a bold statement today for the Christian. The Bible says we're not our own. We're bought with a price, and that price is the blood of God. But this is the Old Testament. And what they're saying is, hey, you know what? I don't have to give any account to God. Who does God think he is? I belong to myself. I got the almighty church of me, myself and I. And we're bought with a price as Christians. We don't own our mouths. We don't own our body. It is given to the one that purchased us. It should be God the Father. And again, Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account thereof. These people don't realize they're going to get, Christians don't realize Everything we say is going to be accounted for. Our tongue, our word, the things we say, the things, you know, when you're reading a perverted Bible, God's going to hold you to those words. If you sing a, a hymn that is not correct to the Bible, God's going to hold you to those words. People don't realize that. 
And with our tongue, we're going to pray. I think that's something that Adolf Hitler believed. I, I don't know the guy. I really didn't study that much. But that guy, he spoke. And man, he, come on, worship me. Come on, follow me. And many people did at his mouth. And there are, there are religions, there are the popes, you know, listen to what I have to say over what the Bible has to say. Listen to our tradition. There are world leaders. Hey, this is what I say, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to prevail. And they don't, don't last many years. Adolf Hitler is dead. Who has said with our, our tongue, we will we prevail? I go again. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? I'm the ruler, I'm the leader. And then mocking the government. Mocking who's ever in charge. You got Christians that do that today. For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord, in that second advent, I will set him in safety, from him that puffeth at him. So God protects the poor. God protects the needy. But I need to make a statement here. Not all people who are poor claim their poorness, their homelessness, their need. Not all are poor, not all are needy. There have been hidden cameras following the people on the street corner with a sign. I need, you know, I need money. I don't know where the last meal comes. And then they follow that person over to a Cadillac or find a, you know, a Lexus, whatever important car is. The Bible calls us not to be fools, and I did a whole study on fools. And the best thing that when it comes to poor people, should I help a poor person out? In most cases, I would not give them money. In many cases where I had somebody come up to me and say, listen, I, I need food. All right. Take them into the, the convenience store, get them a, a, a sandwich, get them a meal, a drink, and a dessert. A, a, a McDonald's, take them to McDonald's and say, listen, I'll give you a number one. You get a, a hamburger, unless you want a chicken, I'll get you a chicken. You get yourself a large, uh, supersize it for them, get them a large soda, and get them a large french fry. And I had been taken on two, I mean, taken properly where I was able to do that. And I've had many people, oh, no, 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 I, I'll get it later. Just give me the money now. No, you're going to use the money for something else. You're really that hungry. I'm offering to you right now. Let's go into that store and you don't take it. You're not really hungry. And there may be cases where, you know, you got to put your prayer to giving them money. Now, I've, I've gone away from many cases where I told them no. And I, I didn't feel that there was a need. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder, but man, deceivers out there are a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. And you've got to try every case, and you're going to have to pray the case, because not everybody could. We, we had one time, my wife, there was a homeless man, somebody gave him some fruits. And I was doing something else. My wife watched the whole thing. And when the people drove off or went off, wherever they went, a whip, the guy took the fruits and just threw them away. Threw them out in the field somewhere, she said. That guy wanted your money. He didn't want food. Man, if he was really hungry, he would start... You know, start killing the orange or at whatever it was. And then someone like that, hey, I ain't going to give you no money. And many times, many people, I didn't say all, oh, many, they want drugs. They want sex. They want to pay for sex. Uh, they want to get a tattoo. They want to get smoked. Or they want to get drink. Don't you be part of that. Don't give them gift cards either. Because they can go in a you know, gift card, you know, get whatever they want. I was even told twice on this one. And you you go get, you know, a package of, you know, those box donuts at the store. And put a magic marker on the barcode. Because what they do sometimes, they go in back into the store where it was bought and say, listen, you know, I bought these donuts. I am not really need them. And they get the money. And they can get the money without the receipt, some cases, sometimes. And then they take the money and get what you weren't supposed to give them. And there's deceive them. And it's sorry because there are people who really need the need. And my wife used to say all the time, you know, there are people who have the need, but there's so many people out there deceiving you. Those that need the need don't get it because of deceivers. One poor apple ruins the whole butcher. 
And you got to try it. But God one day will take care of the poor and God will take care of the of the needy. And there's one, you know, there's a couple times in the in the in the gospels as I've read and studied, it's amazing. We know that Jesus healed those that had medical infirmity. And uh, I'm not gonna probably not gonna quote this right. But there's a couple times in, in the scriptures when you read it, it says, and he healed, and I, I can't remember, it says. Something to the fact is, and I'm going to misquote this, and I apologize, but to those that, that had knee or something like that, implying that there were people that came to Jesus, oh, Jesus, I got an ailment, and they didn't have an ailment. They wanted to be a part of the show. Even the time of, and Jesus called them out. I wish I would have thought of that when I, I just think of night now, because I would love to have that read. And it's in the gospel, and it's in with, with some of the healing, those who had, had need of Something like that. So even the time of Jesus, people were trying to deceive Jesus, God. God knows who is who. And the Bible again says, you know, whereby entertain angels unaware. There may be someone coming to you asking for help, and it may be an angel. But you got to remember, there are angels of God, and there are fallen angels of the devil, too. There's one time I gave a man money, and it was just in such a predicament. I, I went to the ATM. I gave the guy money, and it was for a room. I heard his story, and I told the guy, I, I put the money in his hand, and I put my hand up before he took his hand away. I said, I am giving to you this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you have lied to me, I'm telling you right now, you have misused the money I'm giving to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, I was 50-50. So, I gave it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to be wise. And so, verse 1, David, now watch this. Verse 1, David says, help the ungodly man. They're, they're, they're going away. That's the church age. Verse 2, he tells us what they're going to do, what they're doing. Verse 3, he tells us what God is going to do. Verse 4, he tells exactly what they're saying. We have no God rule over us, no God's going to do stuff to us. Verse 5, he tells you, listen, God's going to be the answer to the poor and needy. Verse 6 and 7, we go to the Word of God. Verse 8, we go to wicked. In the middle of this verse, we see the words of the Lord, the Bible, as we have complete today, David didn't have it complete, are pure words. Pure word. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now what happens when you take silver, you put it in a furnace, and you boil that that, that uh, burned melt, that, that silver, and you skim off the top the scum. And what and what God what God's saying here, the thing is, you put the silver in there, you skim off the top of the silver, you, you get the scum. And God says, you know what? Do it seven times. Bring that silver out. Okay, put it back in. Scrape off that scum. Put it out. Put it back in. Take it out. Put it in for seven times. And those seven times we have the original Hebrew. All right, here's what I'm going to say the original Hebrew. Then we have the original Aramaic. Then we have the original Greek. Then we have the original, oh, no, excuse me, we have the old Syriac. Then we have the old Latin. And then we have the German. And then we have the 1611 English. That's purified seven times of our Bible. Help God, the ungodly Caesars. All right. Paul says we're going to be going through a time when men will be lovers. All right. Men who love the Lord are going to fade away. It's going to apostasy. But guess what? The word of God has been tried. The word of God is going to be true. The word of God is going to be more true than men. That's what are you saying? And it's been purified. It's been put through the fire seven times. Thou shalt keep them, the word, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from the generation forever. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. All right, there's coming a time that the Christian, the true Christians are going to fade away. And there's going to be a time when the church is going to be raptured. There'll be no Christians. 
Yet that word of God stood pure. Like I said, I have been told story that in sale of peaches, somebody put Bibles in there. All right, the Christians are gone. The witnessing are gone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture was buried and arose again the third day according to Scripture. That's gone when the Christians go. But there is still the word of God, even with the Antichrist ruling. And then when we get the glory, is there going to be, you know, some churches have in the front of the, of the uh, right in front of the pulpit, they have a Bible opened up. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's what heaven has. I'm, and I don't have scripture for this, but you know, you don't have to believe. But I'm thinking maybe, what if God raptures us up with all our Bible? What if God said, okay, I go to heaven and I'm holding my Bible with me? You say, well, if somebody didn't have a Bible, are all people going to get a crown? Are all people going to get inheritance? Maybe some people, when they get the glory, they won't have a Bible. I, I, I'm speculating, but wouldn't it be great? You know, wouldn't it be great. You end up, you end up in heaven, and you know, and you get up there, and boom, you blow off the dust off the Bibles, and we get a dust storm in heaven. I know that's speculation. What about you hear crinkling? You know, people having to open up the cellophane of their Bible. I don't know. I know there's. I know Paul didn't have a complete Bible, so. Jesus didn't have a complete Bible like we do today. Who knows? Maybe they'll get one. Maybe those that are worthy will get one. So the word of God is going to be forever. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, and Jesus said, guess what? It's going to be in glory. You're not going to see uh, Darwin's books. You're not going to see Shakespeare's books. You're not going to find the, the, the best top 10, top 100 sellers in glory. You're not going to find the books that you find in a bookstore in glory. You're going to find a Bible. One preacher I know of, he, he, he calls, he says possibly, and I listen to it, and I don't know. Well, he says maybe the, the last book of life is the Bible. And maybe somewhere it translated in the pages of the Bible of all the names and places, maybe your name's in there. It's come to find out that some, my name, Styley, is an accidental name, kind of. And also, but you can find in other languages, S-T-Y-L-Y. And as far as what I found out, my name means style. Stylish. The pen or a pen of writing. If that's the case, well, the Bible says, you know, the sins of Judah is written with an iron pen. Well, maybe I, I'm in the iron pen. I don't know. Uh, other places where it mentions a writing instrument. Maybe our name isn't in the book. Wouldn't it be great all these, uh, you know, Lord said, you know, Stanley, guess what? Let's see. Let's open up your Bible. This Bible you had that you've been raptured with. I don't know. Let's see. You have read this Bible ever since 2001 to 2019. You've read that Bible because I got other ones I've read. But that Bible right now, I just raptured you with your current Bible. You read it all the way through 19 times. Let me show you something. What? I open up to this book, open this chapter, open this verse. Now, this is saying, I don't know. All right, read that verse here. Okay. That's where your name was the whole time. Oh! What's that little mark you have there? Well, that used to be the, that used to be the old English Lord of a question mark. I didn't understand that verse. Well, that's where your name was. I have question marks in my Bible. I don't know it all. Then the Bible says we're going to get a new name. And God said, okay, open up this part of the Bible. Yeah, that story there, that was you. Don't know. I mean, it says in Revelation 20, open the book, and their name was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you realize how many names are in this Bible? Do you realize how many names are not in this Bible? I can't find Hitler anywhere. I hope he got saved before he, he torched himself. He shall keep them, O Lord, the word of God, and thou shalt preserve them. Ever since Moses wrote Genesis on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, 
as he wrote Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua had Joshua written and all that, all those times passed, and we still got them. Where's the where's the originals? All right, you know they say where's the original? Where is the originals of evolution speaking? Where is the originals of atheism spoken about? I'm told after Buddha and all his things, and I, I may be Buddha, I could be wrong. Two hundred years after that, were the sayings of Buddha written. After Muhammad died, was his writings to be written. The Bible stretches off from all ages of men, shepherd, doctor, fisherman, tax collector, king, men who served under kings, all different ages. And here it is still complete. God says he preserved him. Jesus said, what did Jesus say to verse 7? He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny for those people to come up to you? And let's, let's go on the assumption. I, I could be wrong. and It's okay. But let's say for the fact, let's say this is the land's book of life. And it could be, may not. Let's say the guy that comes to you, oh, you know, I get it all the time. Men wrote the Bible. I, I wish I had a dime for every time. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody said that. Wouldn't it be absolutely weird if that person has come up to you, rejected Jesus, because men wrote the Bible, and God says, okay, here's the Bible right here. Men wrote the Bible, okay? I don't see your name anywhere in it. I guess men didn't write your name in there. I guess my son didn't put his name, your name in there, did he? I may be wrong, but I know one thing. I know one thing I'm not wrong. Jesus even said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, this book that we hold right now, we should be the authorized King James 1611 Bible, the Geneva Bible, and the family of them Bibles are going to be in heaven forever. Not the modern version. And then we go to verse 8, the wicked. In the middle of Lord God, people are dying off their phone. Listen, I've been like that. I've had many Christians, oh, I'll walk with you, I'll pray for you. And where are they all? They're gone. They fell by the wayside. That you can choke by the riches of the world. Oh, look at it. He gets harassed. He gets people yelling at him. He gets people that hate him. I ain't going to do that. Oh, I got a job. Oh, I got my family. Oh, you know, I got to have the kids go to Wednesday night ball meetings, stuff like that. And, you know, Lord. Where are all these people that said, I'll stand with you, I'll witness with you, I'll pray for you, I'll be on you. Where are they all? Lord, help! I need help! Lord, I witnessed that here in Daytona Beach, Florida, and there's plenty of places we could have people with gospel tracts and with signs, and you keep taking people away from us. We're not gaining anybody. I need help. We need help, Lord. I know. I know you need help, but you're doing the best you can. Keep doing. Keep doing what I tell you to do. I, I get. You see. Oh, I like what you're doing. I, I, you know, the ones that do. I like what you do. Well, come help. And then we meet people. Yeah, we pass out gospel tracts, and they need help. They go out and witness. They do for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know they need help. Lord, there's not enough people helping knocking on doors. Lord God, there's not enough people helping with the bus ministry. Lord, help. They're doing other stupid things. I mean, Lord's like, I know. And they come to church and they talk stupid things. And they go to work and they talk stupid things. They know, and I know you go out, you talk about the Lord, you witness about the Lord. I know the godly man sees this. And right in the middle of the trouble, I'll get them. Don't worry, I'll get them. I'll take care of them. If they're saved, they'll, they'll get, you know, wood, hay, or stubble, or, or gold, silver, precious stones. If they're lost, they'll go off in lake of fire forever. I'll take care of them. And, they, and they're like, yeah, you know, God, who we, we don't need you. We don't need to listen to you. Saved or lost, Lord God. We're going to do our own thing. We let our light shine, blah, 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 blah. And right in the middle of the whole thing, what's the word of God say? This is what it says, Lord. 
And guess what? What? Whatever they say that's vain, the word of God will stand forever. If you are faithful to me and you do what I tell you to do and you go and preach the gospel and you tell people about Jesus, that's going to last forever. That's what the word of God says. Now, they want to talk about sports. They want to talk about shopping. They want to talk about their job. They want, that's vain. I'll, I'll take care of that. I'll get rid of that. That's not going to last. You just keep on doing what the word of God says. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, you sin, I sin. Confess your sins. The Bible says it. I will forget those sins. I will cleanse you. You don't need to worry about it. Who are the guy that doesn't cleanse his sin? He's going to stand to it. Saved or lost. In the middle of all the trouble. Okay, now we got the word. All right, this is the word of God, the King James Bible. Lord God, I'm in it. I'm going to do. Okay, what do you guys say next, Lord? The wicked. <laughs> the world's still wickedness. There's still bad people out there. There's still evil people out there. There's still people who are saved and won't do nothing. Get over it. You do. David said in the Old Testament, help, Lord, the, ungod the, the, the ungodly. I mean, the godly man sees. And the, the Psalms don't give a date. I wish it did. The wicked walk on every side. Every side of what? What's that saying? We know the wicked walk on the wicked side. That's taken for granted. The wicked are going to do wicked things. But what's every side? There are wicked people out there who walk right. And, and when I did the study today, the biblical truth are his. I read to you a verse out of uh, Second Chronicles. I think it's eleven. Let's look. I think it's eleven. Second Chronicles eleven. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians eleven. I believe it's eleven. I know where it is. Yeah, eleven, verse fifteen. The wicked walk every way. Okay. Well, verse fourteen we must read. What's every way? And no marvel, Satan, we would not say he wicked. I think we can say that's wicked. Himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's not an angel of light. He's, a, he's dark. He's imitating himself to be an angel of light. Jesus Christ is light. He, the, Satan is being the antichrist here. The people over there, I've seen an angel and it was great bright light. I don't know. You might have seen the devil walking the wrong way, the wicked way, but trying to be right. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, Satan ministers, be transformed as a worker, as the ministers of righteousness. All right, let's go back to where we are. Wicked men walk on every side. There are men in pulpits today. They're acting right. They're acting righteous. They're acting holy. They're acting the way a Christian is supposed to act, and they're of Satan. That's walking every way. That's why John tells us you to try the spirit. Satan has ambassadors out there. They're walking just as wicked. You know they're wicked. And then he has ambassadors out there, ministers he calls them, that do right, act right, say right, but they're not right. That is wicked walk on every side. They walk on the good side too. They walk on the left side of the sidewalk and they walk on the right side of the sidewalk. They go down aisle one of the grocery store. They go down aisle two of the grocery store. They may even go to church. When the vilest men are exalted. That's, nothing, that's a great thing for, for the government. And you know what? Help Lord, the godly man sees it. And as the, as the godly man sees it, the wicked will be standing more and more. And then one day, the wicked... The wicked will be in charge of this whole world. We don't need to worry because the Bible says we'll be out of here before the tribulation period. Psalms holds a lot of the tribulation period because it's written to Jacob's trouble. It holds a lot of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It holds a lot because those things, the tribulation period, the second coming and the millennium is for God's people, the Jews. The Christians only take great part. Except for the tribulation. 